What are tokenized asset classes? Asset class is a way to classify different kind of asset types. So if they're all the same types, then they go into the same asset class. Now you see, with tokenization, when we are tokenizing assets, when we're tokenizing the value of things, when we're tokenizing the store value, we are creating a new type of asset class. We're creating different types of asset classes. So after reading through a lot of different papers, a lot of different you know reports to the EU, reports to different government, I can classify. I would like to classify these different tokenized asset classes into seven classes. And the acronym to remember that is two spice. T U S P I C E. Okay. So what's two spice? The first T. That's tokenized securities. So tokenized securities are basically securities that is off chain. Think of it as you know government bonds that's off chain. What you're doing is tokenizing them, creating a digital version of it, putting it on chain. So that's tokenized security. The starting point of it is an off chain world. U utility. U is for utility. Utility is basically the usability within the ecosystem. Utility tokens in general. S security token. So two spice. S security token. Security token is basically security that's done on chain. So the asset comes from on chain. So tokenized security, the first one that we talked about, that is asset that comes from off chain, like government bonds. Security tokens are security that exists from on chain world. So that could be something like a token that represents the equity of a crypto company, for instance. So that is security tokens. P will be for pegged token. So think of pegged token as an asset for you to trade and exchange outside your ecosystem. So stable coins, you can trade stable coins within MakerDAO. You can also trade stable coins, the Dai, in another ecosystem. In Alchemix, you can donate to Red Cross. You can use it in a lot of systems. So that's pegged tokens. Then I is for intellectual property. So intellectual property, this is where I bring in NFTs, non fungible tokens, because they represent value. They're capturing value of this intellectual property. It could be music, it could be art, it could be a video, but it represents intellectual property which has value. C C is for commodities. So commodities will be like silver and gold and Bitcoin, whatever commodity, wheat even, and you're basically creating a tokenized version of it. So a tokenized version of commodities. And lastly, E, that would be exchange token. The function is basically to exchange for goods and services to trade, but the utility, the usability, is only within your ecosystem. So let's say I have a community called the Economics Design Community. If you want to let's say get consulting, or if you are looking to buy the book, then you don't pay in dollars. You pay in the Lisa tokens. Well, these Lisa tokens will only be valuable in the economics design community. No one is going to accept Lisa tokens anywhere else. So this is an exchange token. Its asset function is to function as an exchange within your primary ecosystem. So we talked about something like that, which is the PEG token. Remember, but the PEG token you can exchange with outside your ecosystem. So if let's say the whole world decides to accept Visa tokens to buy your groceries, then that becomes the PEG token. It becomes you know it has a use case outside of your ecosystem. So those will be the seven classes of tokenized asset classes. Two spice. I know there can be a lot of debate around there, but I think it's a good way to get us started to move towards classifying what the different kind of tokenized asset classes would be. Because bear in mind, the different kind of asset classes requires a very different mechanism, very different design of how you're going to design the ecosystem, and in which how your token will exist within your ecosystem. Different asset classes, different kind of value it captures, different utility functions, and different way it manifests itself in its existence and purpose in your ecosystem. So it's very important to have that distinction, and very important to know what you're designing and how is it going to be benefiting the entire ecosystem and the holders of these tokens. Till then, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.